Hello everybody. I am Dr. Lavleen Mangla. I am working in Metro Center for Respiratory Diseases at Metro Hospital, Sector 11, Noida. I am talking about interventional pulmonology today. Interventional pulmonology is a subspecialty of a pulmonary medicine department. It is one of the growing field in the Indian and the world also outside. It basically deals with all the minimal invasive procedures for diagnosing and treating neoplastic and non-neoplastic diseases. In interventional pulmonology, we go inside your lungs, we evaluate your airways, your lungs, and also the pleura, which covers your lungs. The IP guy, but we famously call them interventional pulmonary guys. They may go inside through the endoscopes, like called as basically bronchoscopes and pleuroscope to evaluate the pleural cavity. We have different different types of instruments to evaluate your airways for different different procedures and for different different needs. In bronchoscopes, we have these are the basic things which were developed by Ikeda in 1986 in Japan. Although they have progressed much in their concepts and designs in which a distal camera is attached at the, distal, uh, the point and the image comes onto the computer and you can take the lavage, you can take the sampling through the biopsies and all. But IP has evolved, has changed much after the success of EBUS which is called as endobronchial ultrasounds. In endobronchial ultrasounds, there is an ultrasound attached at the distal part of the trachea or sorry bronchoscope in which through which you can visualize the mediastinal lymph nodes which are near the tracheal wall near your airways and any mass or any tissue which is near your airways. It gives a real time Im imaging and plus you can also take the samples from there and you can aspirate whatever sample is there and that sample can be sent for the pathological tissue evaluation. It is basically done for your diagnosing diseases mainly tuberculosis, sarcoidosis and other any malignancies like lymphoma. Like EBUS, we can also do the EUS endoscopic ultrasounds also. Another thing which has changed the IP is the rigid bronchoscopy. In rigid bronchoscopy, it is a rigid scope which through, in which we go through the mouth and into the airways. For rigid bronchoscopy has both diagnostic and therapeutic measures. For diagnosing, it can be done for cryobiopsies from the lungs. In cryobiopsies, use a cryopro to biopsy from the lung parenchyma. Cryobiopsies have changed how we look the ILDs. ILD is an interstitial lung disease in which your lungs fibrosed. It consists of multiple types of the diseases and for which we need to evaluate which type of disease your patient has. And biopsies gives the best results. If will compare it with the wet surgical biopsies, this cryobiopsies is a daycare procedure and the patient can be admitted in the morning and can be discharged by the evening. And post biopsies, patient, these tissues can be sent for the pathological studies. It has significantly decreased the morbidity and mortality if you compared with the surgical biopsies. Other is we use rigid bronchoscope for therapeutic measures in lung cancer patients. Many of our patients of the lung malignancy or from the malignancy from the other organs who develops airway obstruction and they lands up in critical airway narrowing in which their lumen of the airways decreases in size and they started feeling breathlessness, cough and sometimes they start losing sound which is called a strider. All these patients require therapeutic measures to decrease to increase the lumen of the lumen of their airways and many of these patients require laser to increase to dilate their airways plus they may require the stents also so now ips are changed from the diagnostic to the therapeutic measures most of the patients will come on oxygens and after putting the stent or do, uh, opening the airways they will go at home without oxygen Although a palliative measure, but it gives immense relief to the patient who is breathlessness. 
other intervention pulmonary thing which comes into is pleuroscopy or called as medical thoracoscopy in medical thoracoscopy we go into the pleural cavity we evaluate the pleura in most of the cases which we require pleural thoracoscopy is pleural effusions pleural effusions can be recurrent or it can be because of some diseases like tuberculosis malignancies or some undiagnostic pleural effusions in which are filling up again and again in this patient we create a window or a hole into the chest cavity through which we insert the endoscope and visualize the pleura and we can take the biopsies also post procedure we usually put a tube there and it drains all of the fluid which is present into the pleural cavity pleuroscope can also be or thoracoscope can also be used to break the adhesions of the pleural cavity so that lung can inflate plus in some patient you can also put the talc to do the pleurodesis so that patient does not have recurrent pleural effusion as i told you ip has ever changed but it was 30 years back another treatment which has come is bronchial thermoplasty it is also a therapeutic measurement for bronchial asthma patients in bronchial thermoplasty there is a catheter through which we give radio frequency ablation to the smooth muscles of the airways smooth muscles are the most common muscles which causes the spasm in the asthmatic patients and this feels that let's say cough bronchial thermoplasty is a treatment for the patients who are difficult to control or who are called as severe asthma patients bronchial thermoplasty significantly decreases your daily opium daily ics use plus steroid use and other medications it dilates your airways and patient start feeling better it occurs in three different three different settings at the three different parts of the lung so each each therapy of will be of bronchial thermoplasty will be given after 3 weeks and will be continued for 6 total treatment will continue from one and half months initially when ip interventional pulmonology was started it was more of a diagnostic procedure gradually it has taken a lead into the therapeutic measures and in again in future we are hoping for an, a treatment for asthma and copd patients in copd patients sooner or later some endobronchial valves will also come into the market for copd patients copd patients develop hyperinflation of their lungs means there is an increase in the lungs caliber so all these patients in many these type of patients we can put the valves to decrease the lung caliber so normal lung can ventilate properly maybe in future we will see all do these such valves are present in the outside world like in europe and other countries but sooner or later it will be available in our country also another therapy for copd patient is a vapor therapy is about to come into the market in which we are going to burn the tissue in the lungs to decrease the recurrent exacerbation of the copd patients these patient develop again again increase in the symptoms with the weather change or maybe the dust exposure or maybe because of some infections so with these patients we are going to give them a better therapy so that their these exacerbations can be decreased thank you and uh, thank you and i hope uh, we can provide better treatment and everything for our future patients